I'm from Aalto University, and I'm asking you all guys to join our revolution of a textile industry as we know it. So you might sometimes ponder what happens to your clothes when they are, you are done with them. You might consider donating them or selling them off on the flea market, but in brutal reality, this is what happens to them in the end of the day. It will be piled up in landfill. This is terrible. And obviously, it will become even more terrible every year, every day. There was something like 90 million tons of textile fibers produced in 2015 already, and it's increasing. So obviously, we need a solution. And it's not only, the, let's say, the waste of textile. This kind of fast fashion creates a problem all around. It's the production of the textiles. 70% what you are wearing and what we are wearing at the moment, on average, is based on crude oil. And cotton is not much better either. You might need anything up to 20,000 liters of fresh water to produce a pair of jeans and one T-shirt. So what's the option? We need an option. And we believe sincerely that there is an option called Ion Cell. Ion Cell is based on a unique ionic liquid and a special process developed by two leading universities in Finland, Helsinki University and Aalto University. And better than that, uh, to turn the textile into new textile, we can also take in any kind of raw material that is containing uh, this kind of fibers, so pulp, cardboard, whatever that has cellulosic fibers in it. For the more technologically oriented guys, this is, this is the process. So we start from dissolving the t-shirts or the pulp or the cardboard by a specific unique solvent, and then we produce new fibers by the steps here. Our, our final product is the fiber. We are not uh, making the yarn or making the t-shirts, but in collaboration with our partners, we will do that. And now you guys are asking whether this kind of recycle thing is any good. Well, in fact, it's better than what's direct competition in the marketplace at the moment. So we can make bad quality even better in good pace. Uh, this is things we are probably going to do, but we also do things already now. So we have some leading brand owners for whom we have already made this kind of nice fabrics like, like this one here. Uh, we are still in the lab. We are publicly funded, but we will come back next year to ask for private investors to join in the revolution. So this is kind of pre-warning or appetizer for the, for the funders here. Our roadmap looks like this. And uh, I would say that uh, please follow us, join the revolution. We'll be back. Thank you. Brilliant. Awesome. Just on time. And now four minutes for the jury. Can you tell me about prices? So how cost, what's the cost for this production? And comp how it is compared to like Well, uh, if you make it in the lab, you wouldn't buy it. Yeah, but I mean, in, in but future. But it obviously has to, be, has to be competitive with uh, existing competition. So we are probably well prepared for Tencel, for example, which is existing in the marketplace as a monopoly supplier. So according to our calculations, we are able to compete very well, cost-wise. But it is a scale business. It is a scale business. How's the competition like? Uh, there is, uh, well, there is a lot of competitors, obviously, but we are going to replace the oil-based totally, and we are also replacing most of the cotton because that's not environmentally sound. So the market is quite open for anybody who will bring up this kind of thing. So we see huge potential there. There are startups and there is one existing company in Austria who is making the Tencel and they have had a monopoly because of the IPR for Tencel type of flyer cell fibers. And now the patents are becoming old, so we think we can participate in the competition now. How, how's the yarn market? Is it a lot of big companies? Is it fragmented? It's, is more it's dominated companies? by large companies, mainly in the Far East, but also some existing in Turkey, Italy, uh, Portugal, and so on. And, and they will be your customers, right? Yes, yarn companies would be our prime customers, but we have to negotiate with the brand owners to get the, them to tell the yarn makers to make this kind of yarn. So it's, it's that way around in the fashion business. Uh, Okay, so the brand owner actually asks for they, a specific They kind yard. of have the stronghold okay. because they are defining what's, what's pop next year okay. and the following year. So is it there then a, a, a sustainable value in it as well? Sustainability or? is the thing here because everybody is searching for sustainable fabrics at the moment because of the reasons I explained. So there's a tremendous demand for that kind of things. 
what's a go to market plan like in terms of time schedule for when do you have uh, your first commercial we already now have making some some prototypes uh, we will need the the pilot type of factory to produce larger quantities because we are now in the lab so we need a pilot first that will be within 2 years time schedule and after that we will start to roll out so this is not fast business this is not digital business this is heavy investment heavy chemistry it will take years to build huge factories but in the end there is a huge market as well do, do you think you would prefer to go towards building the factory or towards licensing the technology Sorry? do you think you would prefer to go towards building the factory or towards licensing the technology to to yarn producers or something uh, I think uh, yarn producers would be our prime customer, so we are having the spinning part ourselves, but after that the yarn comes, yes. Any more questions? So, uh, what, what, how... Think, Hello? <laughs> how, I, how are you planning to source the material at scale? Like, um, are you thinking about that part of the... Mm. We probably Fancy. begin with pulp because that's the easy way out to start to pump up the process. That's readily available everywhere, basically. And uh, the problem, as you know, in the in the recycled textiles is that there is no collection system at the moment in place. So we have to start developing cooperation there. Then we have ASOS, the British uh, company, who has been already offered their cooperation, and also Red Cross of Finland has has uh, been in touch with us, so we could start collecting the clothes. So you're more likely to integrate with the existing solution we are probably in the pulp own. side we are probably probably searching for integration for pulp factories because that makes sense in the infrastructure side and also the energy and everything in the let's say clothes side it's a little bit different story because you have to first start collecting the clothes from the marketplace and that's it thanks a lot iron cell and yari thank you